come walking up to me and they're just so big. And Lily's going like this to help Sadie walk up to her because Lily was like her little mother hen. <laughs> She's trying to like say these words, but they were very broken. It was like, see, see jump, see jump trap. And I look at her and she has these green eyes and I'm like, Oh my God! I want you all to know that adoption is amazing and God is amazing. Yeah. Get busy. Get busy. Everybody get, get busy. I need y'all to report to the dance floor right this minute. finish well we're gonna move on to our part two yeah. yeah so we are moving on to part two of how we found Lily and this next part involves two other really important people so I will call them on over here first of all we have <laughs> wait climbing on the hanging bed is Sadie. Sadie and next we have Mr. Luke, <laughs> Mr. Luke. and the swinging bed is swinging and swinging Okay, so now we have Mr. Luke as well. So we are talking about finishing at least part two. We're gonna have a part three of this one too. We have a sibling group of six kids. That's a lot of stories to cover. So this is part two. So we're going to continue where we left off. But I wanted you guys to see something. So I, you know, I write in journals and I have found the journal entry from when I found out that Lily's name would be Lily. And I must say, that it was one month after she was born. And then moving forward, the story of when I had the dream, when I actually decided to continue to foster and try to find Lily, and that was exactly one month after Sadie was born. Very interesting. So I will continue to the story of how I got these three. So I'm gonna actually read from you for my journal. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? No, they are not ready. This is dated August 13th, 2009, talking about my dream in August 20th, 2007. Anyway, so it starts out, I have found her, yay! The little three to four year old that I had been looking for for a very long time. I knew her name would eventually be Lily, and I'm just gonna say it from my heart from this point on, but it's so cool that I actually have it in my journal when all of this took place. But so what happened, was that morning I was saying my prayers and I had listened to a tape that told me that at the time a tape you guys probably don't know what a tape is it's like a CD or your guys's would be like a podcast or something like that but yeah yeah so it was a tape player at the time but anyway so I was listening to this tape that said that you should listen after you pray just to see what inspiration you get and things like that so I had, I had a really busy time going on in my life at that point and I still was like nope I'm gonna listen after I pray so it was early in the morning and I said my prayers and I was sitting there listening but really I was starting to like make lists in my mind of like what I needed to do that day to be honest and completely interrupting my thoughts is you need to call and I won't tell you her whole name I'll say Sue you need to call Sue. And Sue is the lady that I talked about in part one that has gray hair and glasses. Yeah. You need to call Sue. And so I'm like, okay. But again, she was really intimidating because she held a lot of power. She was an awesome lady, but she was kind of intimidating and scary. Do you know anyone like that? Like maybe a teacher or somebody that you're like <laughs> a little bit afraid to go up and talk to. Yeah, that was that kind. I mean, I loved her and I love her now a ton, but it was still really scary to call her. So I'm like, ah. So I hurried and called her and I thought, oh, she won't answer. It's just like five minutes after 7 a.m. She's probably not even in yet. And she picks up the phone. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, hi, this is Tiffany Nelson. I was just wondering if you had any children that you needed to place. And she's like, well, no. And I was like, okay, well, I just had a strong feeling to call you this morning. So and she goes, well, I have three that I need to place this morning and before I go into a meeting nonetheless at 8.30. So, but you don't want three. And she said it just like that. And I said, well, actually tell me a little bit more about them because <laughs> I just might. And she said, well, um, you can't even fit that many in your car. And I said, actually I could, I would just have Kennedy, who's now over 12, sit in the front seat. And she said, Kennedy, she was one of these little girls named Kennedy. 
And I was like, okay. And she said, and then there's a baby and he's two months. <laughs> And he is, his name is Peyton. And I said, okay. And my heart is going, I wonder what the three-year-old's name is. And I said, oh, okay. So a two-year-old named Kennedy and a two-month-old named Peyton. What's the three-year-old's name? Because she told me a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and two-month-old. I said, so what's the three-year-old's name? And she's looking. I hear papers rustling. And I'm just sitting there. I'm standing by my bed. And she goes, her name is, looks like her name is Lily. And I literally went to sit on my bed and I fell off the corner of my bed <laughs> onto the floor <laughs> and I started crying and I was just bawling and she's telling me all about it and I was like <laughs> and finally she said she noticed I wasn't talking on the other line and she's like are you okay and I'm like remember how I told you that I even knew her name and she's like yeah and I said that's the name and I and she's three and her name is Lily and she said she would just calm and she said you know what I think you need to meet these three kids. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm so excited. And so that day, literally that day, so Benji had to work. Benji knew all about this, by the way. Like, I obviously tell him everything that goes on in my heart and every experience that I had. And so he's so supportive and loves me. And although he hasn't had personal, some of these personal experiences, he knows in his heart that it was important that I find Lily. And neither of us realized they would be, a Lily would be the gatekeeper to more kiddos. And so Benji fully understood that Lily was kind of the gatekeeper and I had to have all of these experiences. Honestly, like why did I have to know that her name would be Lily? Why did I have to know she would be three? Why did I have to know that she would have green eyes? All these details, I think because when I finally found her, I knew so much about her that I absolutely knew that Heavenly Father wanted me to find the siblings and the other kids besides just her, if that makes sense. So I had those experiences for huge important reasons. So let me fast forward to when I got to go meet them. So Benji had to work that day and I didn't care. I was like, I'm not putting it off even for one more hour. I'm gonna go now. And so I got in my car and I drove for about an hour to go to where they were staying. And I walked in and I'm just like, oh, very, it's kind of nerve-wracking when you go in to meet who very well could be your babies for the rest of your life. I mean, oh, my heart was pounding and I just knocked on the door and I wait and this nice lady, kind of tall, short hair, loud voice answers the door and she says, hi, I guess you're supposed to meet the three kids I have. Sue told me all about your experience and I'm like, oh, okay. And so I walk <laughs> in and she goes, well, the two little girls are playing outside right now. Let me go get the baby. And so she goes in to get the baby and she brings out Luke in this kind of like a car seat thing. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> and I'm going to put pictures right here. He was so cute. <laughs> and like he, he just like immediately was smiling at me and I was looking at his big blue eyes and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be my baby. Like anyway, I was flipping out and she's like, okay. And so I was like, hold me and play with him. She's like, well, the girls are outside if you want to go meet them. So I sat him back down, gave him to them and I walk outside and it's gonna make me cry. I see these two little blondies and they're just playing by the trampoline and they're talking and they're looking and playing at some little thing on the dirt. And I'm like, hey guys, hey guys. And they turn around and I'm like, my name's Tiffany, I came to meet you. And they come walking up to me and they're just so big. And Lily's going like this to help Sadie walk up to her because Lily was like her little mother hen. And so <laughs> they walk up to me and I'm like, oh my gosh. And Sadie, first thing out of the gate, arms up and I'm like oh my gosh I'm picking up my little sweet Sadie the, her name wasn't Sadie yet. I'm picking up my sweet little girl oh and she's gonna be mine forever and then I'm giving her snuggles and she's just talking and talking, talking. do you want to come see me on the swings do you want to come back and pick me she's trying to like say these words but they were very broken it was like see see jump see jump trap like she was trying to tell me about jumping on the trap <laughs> anyways I'm talking to her I'm talking to her and then I sit her down and she's good we're gonna go on the swings and then I pick up my Lily and I look at her and she has these green eyes and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't, I literally felt like I was dreaming, you guys. Like I can't even describe, like I tried to have faith that I would find who Heavenly Father wanted me to find. But when you actually are there, I literally, and I wrote it in my journal, I stand all amazed. Like I still could not believe that he put these little drops of wisdom in my path 
even years before Lily was born is when I had the experience and knew that she would be three. And then right after she's born, her name will be Lily. And just right after Sadie's born, like more details about how I didn't need to do foster care. It's amazing to me that Heavenly Father gave me all these experiences and it just completely came to pass. It all came to pass. And so anyway, so I loved them immediately, obviously. And I walked in and talked to the lady who was taking care of them. And she said, actually, we're going out of town tonight for like a, like our anniversary. And so I talked to Sue and you're just welcome to take them. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just met them and I get to take them to my house. I love them forever. <laughs> And so I'm like buckling them in and they're here and driving. Benji hasn't even met them yet and I'm just driving home. <laughs> and I get there and oh my gosh, you guys, my heart was just so incredibly full. And I sat the girls up to the bar and the only thing that Lily would say is, um, cookie, like I told you in her other video. I said, are you sure you don't want this? I'm trying to put all this stuff out there. She's like, no, um, cookie. And I go, okay, I don't have any cookies. Like, anyway, it was just so special and so incredibly cool. And I'm just going to read you really quick what I wrote at the end of this experience. I wrote, it all came together for us. It all made sense. I met Lily and all three of them came to my home. As the weeks went on, I kept receiving feelings and confirmations that it was indeed her eyes and her smile and that twinkle, her presence was all the same as my dream. Though Sue and the other caseworker kept telling me that they were going to go back, and they actually even gave me a date that they would be returning, but I had such peace in my heart that it was all gonna be okay. So many times the Spirit confirmed the Lord's will will be done. No one can stand in the way of it if it is truly his will. Then the caseworker called me one morning and told me that their birth mom had again relapsed and had tested positive for methamphetamines and that he had talked to her about relinquishing her rights and she told him that she had actually been thinking about it. Then last week, both the mom, birth mom and the birth dad set up an appointment to relinquish their rights. I knew it would happen, but I still feel so sad for them, for the birth parents, that they would create such beautiful children and then give in to addiction. I don't judge them. My heart breaks for them. The power of Satan in addiction is mind-blowing. But the Lord's power in bringing these special little three to me and the forward nation I have felt all of the way about adopting these beautiful children, I stand all amazed. I felt that the little girl's name would be Lily before she was even born, and I believed. So guys, needless to say, a few months later, we were able to adopt all three, and I'm going to leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger. It was a couple years before I actually reached out to her to tell her all about the amazing experience of finding these three, and I just wanted to see how she was doing, and my heart was going out to her. You know, adoption is a little bit of a tricky thing because there's always attached a little bit of sadness for the birth family and a lot of sadness sometimes. Well, meaning people would always be like, oh, that's so sad that their mom and dad lost the three or whatever. And it always kind of broke my heart because I was so full of joy and excitement and happiness and being able to find the three kiddos that I had and so it's always coupled with a little bit of sadness in adoption which is hard but then when I started to think about it and after I had Ledger I had an epiphany. Tiffany's epiphany, right? <laughs> I had Ledger and my body was miserable and it hurt and you know when you go through labor it hurts. I had been super sick and I thought you know what even with biological kill kids and with birth children there is some really hard things that have to happen. There's some real terrible things that sometimes happen or are super painful, but then the beauty completely overshadows it and takes all of that away and just makes it a completely beautiful experience to have a baby. And that's exactly how adoption is for me. There's always some sadness and some hard things to deal with. And there's obviously trauma that the kids that you love and you're gonna love the rest of your life have experienced. And so that's super hard but then there is just this beautiful healing that comes and the whole experience is amazing and like I said I stand all amazed at what God has given to us and so that's part two and I will tell you more about how we found their other three cute kiddos. <laughs>
in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. And again, this is my heart. And I'm putting it out here for you guys to find out all these experiences. Some of the really sacred experiences I've kind of kept in my own heart. But I'm telling you a lot of very special things. And so I hope that you can know that I do that because I want you all to know that adoption is amazing. And God is amazing. Okay, so we will see you in part three of how I found my kiddos. But until then, make sure you subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Give us a big thumbs up. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Bye. Bye.